Hello guys, Willem Pets here. I'm back from my little holiday of the wedding in the Cape and uh, I've got some very big news to share with you so let's fall right into it. So uh, you guys may remember a video that I shared on Friday which I had to make quickly because I was on the way to get onto the plane and go off to the Cape to the wedding that I was going to uh, which was about a leakage at the Kuberg nuclear power plant. Now this caused a huge stir and the former PR manager of Kuberg, as well as a senior nuclear engineer there, Desmond Bernardo, contacted me and asked me to, to for time and while, take the video down and he will come onto my channel and explain exactly what happened. But over the weekend, ESCOM released their own statement and it was quite laughable what they said. But in fact, ESCOM confirms the minister's words that there was in fact leakings at the Kuberg power station. Let's jump into the statement made by ESCOM. ESCOM has noted with concern irresponsible allegations made by a Mr. Petzer in a video recording where he alleges that there has been nuclear safety breaches at Kuberg power station. Okay, so in the first place it's quite funny to me that they are attacking me even though I was quite late on the train here on this whole thing. It has started with Corne Mulder who has asked a lot of questions in parliament about this and got a response from the energy minister Jeff Radebe who in fact confirms that the power station was leaking nuclear waste in his own words. The exact same words that I quoted. Then after that the Freedom Front Plus wrote a quite a few articles in both Afrikaans and English on their websites attacking the government and ESCOM and the ANC saying this is absolutely unacceptable. After that, the biggest Afrikaans newspaper in the country wrote an article about it, which Mr. Desmond Bernardo, the nuclear engineer from Kuberg, claimed was very irresponsible and there was inaccuracies in it. So, for ESCOM to target me and say that this all is a response to me, who climbed on the whole story after all of this happened, is quite laughable. Note that they say irresponsible allegations made by a Mr. Petzer. But they don't say false allegations, irresponsible allegations, but not false in but not false allegations. Even though I didn't make any allegations, I was just quoting the Minister of Energy, it seems ESCOM confirms that this is in fact the truth. After that, there's a bit of standard PR copy pasta, and then after that, they go on with this. To this end, the information that Mr. Petzer has twisted. Now they don't say how it has been twisted and they don't confirm how it has been twisted even though I think everybody knows I've just been quoting the minister. Uh, they say is from a public document with responses given in parliament, uh, excuse, given to parliament about three incidents. And then they go on and they confirm the three incidents of which two has been leakages of waste into the sea. And one has been leakages of waste into the air. So we know there has been at least three incidents since 2014 and ESCOM has confirmed it for us. Now this statement is very, very, very badly written. And I think they attacked me because they wanted to make it seem like it's the smallish guy on YouTube who made an allegation. Even though half the country is talking about this, political parties are fighting in parliament about this and major news corporations are talking about this. Yet, ESCOM, the huge state-owned enterprise, makes it about me. But this was the most important news that you can share with everyone. It has confirmed it has been true and we have ESCOM on the back foot. We would love to send you updates here from Pofader Media on WhatsApp. So if you want to join our WhatsApp broadcast list, send your name and preferred language to plus 27 it's quite laughable that the citizen decided to use this to do a huge hit piece on me because we all know the citizen has an axe to grind with me. This is because I have been quite vocal in calling out their editor Mr. Daniel Friedman for amongst other things saying that all white people on the right of the political spectrum should be killed and then he goes on to say that he doesn't know if we're going to do a group mass killing or if we're going to kill them one by one. And he also made fun of white people being tortured to death in racial attacks. This has hurt their credibility a lot, so they do have their knife out for me. Um, my solutions to this problem. So I just wanted to get to the solutions. So my solutions are, number one, my suggestion is we could um, kill them all. 
so we could kill everyone on, on the white right. So we could either we could either do it one by one or in a kind of group thing. Now, what is quite funny is their whole article consists of a total of five sentences, and then they basically copy the whole ESCOM statement after that. But Mr. Friedman himself didn't want to write the article about me. He gave it to a Kaunda Selisho. Now, poor Kaunda Selisho seems to have a trouble understanding the English language because if he actually read the statement that he copied and pasted into his own article, he wouldn't have made all these stupid claims about me. In the title it says, ESCOM rubbish says false radioactivity claims made by Willem Petzer. Okay, so I never used the word radioactivity even once, and they put that in quotation marks, so that already is quite odd. It is quite laughable that they always try to pause my videos at the most unflattering moment possible to take a screenshot. Then it says, right-wing vlogger conceded the point and had to take down a recent video that featured a number of inaccuracies based on a apparently alarming information that was not fact-checked. No, that is not at all what happened. I took down the video because I was asked to by Mr. Desmond Bernardo in exchange for him coming onto my channel and explaining exactly what had happened. And I didn't concede anything. I quoted the Minister of Energy in this country, the guy who, who was supposed to be an expert on this, Mr. Jeff Radebe. It's also quite funny that they call me a right-wing vlogger because it seems like anyone who tries to be objective and get news out there in an objective way is considered a right-winger by today's standards. In a statement issued on Sunday, South African power utility ESCOM has hit back at prolific blogger Willem Petzer after he posted and deleted a video in which he claimed to reveal the truth about the Kuberg power station. Uh, that was never claimed to ever be the case. I made a video afterwards saying the truth about the power station video in which I said exactly what I said earlier in this video that I took the video down because I'm going to have the nuclear engineer on to come explain what happened. After causing slight panic among his viewers with his exaggerated claims about waste leakages, Petzer has since claimed the sources he based his initial video on were wrong and that is why he took the video down. Okay, so every single thing that is said in this sentence is untrue. Um, there was no exaggerated claims. There was a quote of the minister. If you want to use the word exaggerated needs to be teached to this Mr. Kaunda Selisho or Mrs. or whatever, whoever he or she is, is that there needs to be a quantity here. And the quantity that I said needs to be higher than the actual quantity that it is. And I didn't name any quantities. I just said that the place were leaking. And it was. And ESCOM has come back and said that the leakings were minor and insignificant, but they also didn't give a number. They need to explain to us exactly what this number is and what does it mean to leak insignificant or minor nuclear waste into the ocean and into the air. Then he says Petzer claims the sources he bases in his video on were wrong, which is also not true because I based my initial video on the response gave by Mr. Jeff Radebe, the Minister of Energy, to the Freedom Front Plus's questions. So the sources weren't wrong. I was just quoting what was going on in Parliament and then I took it down as I explained many times on all different platforms because I was asked to do so by the nuclear engineer from ESCOM. Any case, then the citizen goes on and basically copy and paste the whole statement by ESCOM in which they confirmed that the quote that I gave from the Minister of Energy were in fact 100% correct, and they were in fact leakages at ESCOM. But the story doesn't end there. This nuclear engineer from ESCOM, Mr. Desmond Bernardo, made two videos thus far in which he claims that was written in Marula Media and was being said by the Minister of Energy were completely wrong and they have no idea what they're talking about. Now, of course, I'll leave a link in the description to all the things that I've been talking about in this video thus far, so you guys can go check it out for yourselves. But I'll put in some things that Mr. Desmond Bernardo said in his video so you guys can see what he was saying. There's never been a nuclear waste leakage at Kuburg ever in the history of the power station that, is, that, that could or has affected the public. I just want to make that clear. 
let's take a look at how he explains how Marula Media got it wrong in his video called Why Marula Media Got It Wrong. That there's never been a nuclear waste leak at Kuburg as has been explained in the media and especially the Marula Media article written by Jan Jan Joubert, uh, that was extremely irresponsible, not researched and based on comments from the Minister of Energy who is not an expert on anything nuclear. And if Jan Jan Joubert had any good conscience, he would have contacted Kuburg themselves to actually get a statement so that he could make a, an informed representation of what actually had happened. So one article that was badly written has actually caused a huge problem in the media and in the public mind. So the basis for the argument in Parliament sounds to me like it has ulterior motives. And I am sure that the Freedom Front Plus leader actually had this information for a period of time and decided to bring that information out now at this time, which also begs the question, what is the motive for this? Now, I don't want to get into politics. I want to get into specifics. So when it comes to Kuburg, running any nuclear power station has normal processes. And those processes require gas releases, water releases. It requires for nuclear waste to be stored. So any nuclear power station needs ventilation. The turbine oil gets ventilated. The containment building gets ventilated. The nuclear auxiliary building gets ventilated. And that is the area where nuclear radiation could be present at any time. The entire nuclear auxiliary building is a controlled zone. In other words, people that leave that building or any material that leave the building gets monitored for radiation. So you cannot leave that area if you have any contamination on you. But of course, his explanation is very long. But on Thursday, the 4th of April at 7 p.m., I will be hosting Mr. Bernardo to explain exactly what went on. All right, guys, crazy story. Thanks for watching until the end. If you have watched until the end, I would love to know if you have. So tell me exactly what do you think? Who is in the wrong year? Is it Mr. Bernardo, the nuclear engineer? Is it ESCOM? Or is it the minister, Jeff Radebe? I would love to hear from you in the comments. Tell me, please. All right, you guys have a good day. And remember, if you want to receive updates from us, send your name and preferred language to plus 27715677162. Have a good day. Goodbye and God bless.